Welcome back to another episode of The Rundown. It's myself, Joe, Brandon, and JT is also here today. Crazy to think about, a little reunion tour going on, but we got a great episode for you. But fellas, first off, how are we doing today? Oh, it's hey, going great. Yeah, things are, are are rolling along, right? Yeah, it's kind of, I mean, it's solid for you, JT. I mean, baseball team's kind of rolling. I mean, I guess we can start with that if we really want to. JT is the head baseball coach for Big Rapids. I mean, what's the season looking like so far? I mean, there's been some cancellations at the start, but getting rolling already with three wins. I mean, sounds like it's going pretty hot for you guys. Yeah, yeah. So we uh, we had Petoskey last Wednesday got canceled. So we played, we were able to play Cadillac, but they had to move the game down to us. Um, so that went well. We won 6-2 and 16-1. Um, bats kind of came alive in the, the second game there. Uh, Coach Franklin does a good job with that team. Uh, so game one, we ran into a decent arm and uh, Eli Main. So it was a good test for us to open up. Uh, really would have liked to have uh, that that other doubleheader prior to going into conference play against uh, Tri-County. That really helped us last year. We went down to St. Joe and played Niles and St. Joe. And I know we went to Niles and played St. Joe and Niles. And uh uh that really helped right it helped us as coaches know hey who's kind of who's who are the guys that we need to give reps to and stuff like that so we didn't quite have that we only had uh we had nine innings total between the two games against Cadillac to kind of figure some of that out a lot of uh simulated game stuff we do indoors but it's just not the same as being outside so we rolled into uh Tri-County uh take on coach Nelson's Vikings and um, it was actually the the first game, even though it finished 19-5, it was actually a ball game for most of the game. Uh, and then we started hitting the ball. Um, their defense made some mistakes, and we were able to take advantage. And then game two, we're up 12-1 to one going into the third inning. It got suspended for darkness. Um, but bats really came alive game two. So we, we graduated quite a bit of talent. Last year, coming into this year, right, we have an all-state pitcher, and Ben Knuth is is now running with you, Brandon, at Ferris State. Um, lost Will Strickler, who's playing football over at Alma now. Um, you know, they're, they're Brett Root, locked down second base for us. Brody Sleeper is playing college baseball down at Lake Michigan. And then even Braden Foster brought a lot of experience to the outfield for us. So, um, you know, we had, we had a number of guys last year that we – we lost. So we had a lot of holes to fill. Um, and this year we opted to take some young talent and give them experience. Um, I fully believe every single one of these uh, five sophomores that we took are capable of contributing this year uh, and next year. And case in point on that is uh, anyone that looks at the, the box score for the Tri-County games, I was without my, uh, my all region center fielder, Riley Venix. Uh, who's day to day? I was without Riley, so sophomore Jonathan Lazinski let off for me, and he piled up. Uh, what he had three hits in the first game. He probably had another two in the second game already. A um, lot of doubles out of him. Uh, you know, he he's just a, a gamer. He can he, he's got really good instincts hitting. Uh, so I just loved having him. Yeah, he had another double in the second game too. Um, just love having him at the top of the order. And he is a, uh, I, I talk to him about it all the time. He is just an enigma for pitchers. When we were doing a lot of uh, live indoor prior to spring break, you know, he's facing Gilchek, who is our guy. He's our, our workhorse this year as a starter. And Jonathan's putting together 10, 11, 12 pitch at bats, falling off five, six, seven pitches. He's just an enigma for pitchers at the plate. He only attacks strikes. Uh, takes balls, fouls pitches off, gets a good pitch to hit, and puts it into the gap. You know, he's got really good instincts. So him, um, really happy with Brody Osaski, who I can kind of move all over the field. He's another lefty hitter with a ton of speed. Uh, only Venix is faster than Brody. Um, and then Heist and Rakoff were two other guys that uh, are playing some infield and cycling through. The arm of Rakoff and then the arm of Noah Swepenheiser, the fifth sophomore, um, have been uh, the development out of those two has been great this winter and heading into the spring. Noah's a lefty, so he's a vastly different look than a lot of the other pitchers. 
Uh, so it's a good mix. So those guys have all worked really hard and they're, they're already, you know, three games in almost four. They're, they're making an impact and we expect a lot out of them moving forward. Big time. For, dude. Yeah, for sure. And especially JT 26 wins in your first season last year, taking over the program, obviously really nice start, but what were some of those things that especially going into year two, that you learn from year one and you're looking to change within the program and especially implement in the off season that now have propelled you guys already forth here in the early parts of this season? Well, baseball is about pitching. I mean, if you don't have pitching, you can have the best defense, the best offense in the world. You're going to lose games. So coach Yonker and I, he's my pitching coach, my assistant. We've really put an emphasis last fall as well as all throughout the winter on, uh, on throwing on you know, doing, we have a very specific throwing program. These guys go through on body work, med ball work, lifting, stretching, all that stuff to try to develop arms. I mean, if you have arms, you can make a run. Uh, so we want to really build this team to be able to win that one game. Big Rapids has historically, we've had issues. We can win throughout the season, but when it comes to the postseason, we run into a team like Gladwin with Lucas Mead, who's a Saginaw Valley Cardinal now. And, uh, and we just lose that one game and we're done. Right. And knowing being big Rapids, we always get the pre-district draw. That's just the way it goes. MHSA needs to get that NPR going ASAP because it's been on our website now for two years. Um, so the, we were the one seed last year. We played the two seed and Gladwin in the pre-district. So riddle me that one. Um, that's happened to us for years. We got to be able to get through that one game. It dates back to um, really Coach Yonker's playing days. We made a run to the regional, and that's just because John was a gamer himself. He would go out there and, and deal five, six innings, and we had guys like Jackson Lund who would put the bat on the ball and make stuff happen, so we'd score runs. So we were able to win that that single game and, and kind of get rolling into the postseason. We just haven't had that. Uh, so we, we had a lot of success last year throughout the season. Um, a lot of that came from uh, having high expectations for a lot of those very talented seniors. Um, so we focused this year on developing arms. So we have a lot more depth. So even with injuries or extenuating circumstances, we have redundancies in arms, um, younger guys that can step up. Um, but we also put, I put a big emphasis on uh, discipline, on focus, um, you know, and then on confidence. We talk about that all the time from day one until today. Kids love to run themselves down uh, whenever they make a mistake or strike out or something. When you speak, it becomes reality. So when these kids run themselves down for an entire season, they have a bad season, right? So it's it's little things as simple as that. Coaches don't run players down. Uh, you know, players can't run each other down. Players don't run themselves down. We're always moving forward. We're always staying positive. Um, it's a tough game to play. You're gonna, you could have a great day and go 0 for four at the plate, right? You can have a great day and you just have really bad luck as a pitcher and you give up five runs, right? But you hit your spots. You have to be able to power through that stuff with a positive mentality. Um, so having that discipline, you know, it 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 adds up um, as well, and that goes from, you know, we sweep out our own dugouts. We uh, take care of all of our own equipment. We tear down and set up our own practices. We don't let anyone else do it for us. We do it in a timely manner. Guys are put on the clock going in and out of the dugout, uh, you know, catchers gearing up, gearing down, every little thing like that. You you just you hold the tempo up and you keep the expectation going. And uh, I've seen tremendous results from it so far. These kids, they're they're getting after it in practice, right? So they get after it in a game. Uh, so it's just, it's been really positive so far. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's high school baseball, right? So they got to have fun. So we make sure that they're also having some fun. Like I, I would say yesterday, our practice was a very up-tempo practice. There's some running involved, right? We're doing a lot of situational stuff, but uh, it was a fun practice, right? The kids kept the energy up and I think everyone had fun doing it. So that's what it's all about. Sweet action, brother. And especially, I mean, you're wearing the shirt this summer, you're going to be taking over the Post-98 and Betts team. It's bringing back the rubber duckies. I mean, talk about that, how you're kind of preparing for that a little bit. I mean, you obviously want to put the focus on high school season right now, but what have you kind of been getting ready in preparation for this summer? 
Yeah, so the summer uh, I worked with Mark Brecca. Uh, so the there's always confusion on that, Mr. Nagy. It's actually the American Legion post-98 team, but they operate for correcting out of the me. embeds post-1942. post <laughs> So, um, but yeah, Mark Brecca really helped. He, I gave him the idea and he really ran with it. He loved the idea of it. Um, and just starting a Legion team again, the idea behind it is you just – you get the best players in the area to all come together and represent West Michigan uh, in what is a very competitive American Legion tournament at the end of the year. Uh, Linwood, Berry Hill, these are some of the best teams in the state, like without a doubt. Berry Hill is legit. They have some of the best players, high school baseball players in the state of Michigan playing for them. Um, I mentioned Gladwin and Lucas Mead. Lucas Mead, Lincoln McKinnon, all those kids from that team that beat us in high school ball last year, they all played highly competitive baseball for the Gladwin American Legion post. So American Legion baseball is no joke. Um, my uh, The reason I went towards this is because I want access to those teams for our guys to be able to play. But also I wanted to create an environment for the area's best players to play with minimal financial commitment. It shouldn't be about how much money you have and the size of the check that you can write um, for your son to play baseball. It should only be about whether they can play or not and they want to play and compete at a high level. So um, in, in doing this, we're able to put together quite a few fundraising apparatuses and keep the cost minimal to these players. I've gotten guys to, to commit to pitch even every now and then against us. We're playing at least two college summer shoreline league teams this summer. Um, it's a lot of double headers. It's not as many tournaments as in the past. I personally hate tournaments. Uh, they put time constraints on it. They put mercy rule stuff. And so, you know, you're in summer ball and you go through a tournament and you play 12 innings in four games, you know, whether you win or lose, that's just, that's a joke to me. So, and you're paying a lot of money to do it. These tournaments are expensive for the older kids. So instead, I just got, you know, we're, we're going to play down at Sullivan Field that GR is putting a lot of money into, that classic field on the northwest side of Grand Rapids against a uh, Valpo post. Um, we're going to play a couple travel teams like Cadillac, Josh Franklin's Latitude. You know, we'll play in the Berry Hill Tournament, the Post 110 in Mount Pleasant. Um, so it's, it's a really competitive schedule. Um, that also offers a lot of exposure for these younger guys who want to play at the next level. So um, some of our guys are going to be 19. Some of them are going to be younger. A lot of them are going to be younger. Uh, and it's not exclusively a Big Rapids team. There are guys from Reed City. There are guys from White Cloud, uh, Nuego, Beale City. You know, we, we got guys who are going to throw for us and play for us from, from all over. And that's the point. Right. We base summer baseball gets watered down because there's 400,000 summer teams. Um, everyone it, it takes there's no barrier to entry. Right. Everyone uh, you can just start a team out of nowhere. So the idea is pull all the best players. Let's represent West Michigan. Let's represent Macasa Osceola counties. And uh, and let's let's make some history in the summer as well and have a lot of fun doing it. So the kids also, you know, post 98 were the rubber ducks. Um, you know, the kids really they kind of ran with that. But the, the design and the idea actually came from Coach Yonker, Johnny Yonker, and his, his little sister designed the logo. So um, so we got that 19U, and then there's actually a 16U, which is also kids from around the area. And then there's even a 14U, um, which uh, loaded with talent, a lot of, lot of upcoming, right? That's the pipeline. You keep that pipeline going. And I don't even care if any of those younger kids end up in my high school program. To me, it's better to have better baseball in the area, right? As much as I would love to have a guy like Max Hammond on my team for Big Rapids High School, it's great that we get to play against him. It really is great that we get to play against him. Um, you know, we we lost some talent in the conference this year. Kyler Larson's gone. Xavier Allen, in my opinion, is one of the best baseball players uh, to come out of the area in a long time. Uh, they're all, they graduated, right? Ruther out of White Cloud, who's now a rubber duck. Um so we lost some talent in the conference. So I want our conference to be competitive, right? We have to play these teams. So I'd much rather the teams be the best that they can be so that when we make that postseason run, we're battle tested. So there you go. That's the whole thing, Joe. You got, you got the whole story. Appreciate that. I appreciate yeah. that very much. For sure. And especially JT with the schedule you mentioned with this Legion team, you're playing 
all the top tournaments that you can fit your schedule and especially with the non-conference schedule for high school as well. Seems very similar. You're playing Traverse City West. You're playing some of those good up north teams out of that conference in the big north. You're playing Shepard, a team that was good last year. Montebello, you guys are hosting at home. Just talk about the philosophy of that schedule design to play a lot of these tough teams in non-conference with the conference schedule also as well. Yeah, yeah. So we we really loaded um, May with a lot of uh, we have a lot of weekend stuff going on in May, right? So after the Cardinal invite or the Tom Ryan tournament, which is May 11th, we do not have another home game for the rest of the year after that. Um, but that includes, we have some conference, but I was able to set up special thanks to coach McKenzie down at Byron center, Byron center rumor has it. They got a couple of kids going to Nebraska, right? They always have arms down there. That's a legit team. That's a legit program. Pat is a former tiger himself. He played in the minor league system for him. The guy knows what's up. Um, and then the next day after that, we go play the defending state champion Beale City, right? With Caden Smith, the Kent State commit. So trying to find a lot of a lot of opportunities like that. We have a really good relationship with both TC West and TC Central. We play them every year. It's great. I have a really good relationship with Petoskey. That's why it was a shame that we weren't able to get that game in. Um, this year, it's a very competitive league. That up north league is it's just whether you think the team is going to be good or not, they're going to be solid, right? They're going to compete. Um, and then we host Sacred Heart, which I love because my high school coach's son plays for Sacred Heart and Grady Pratt. Um, so we host Sacred Heart and we host Charlevoix, who's not bad um, in our own tournament, as well as uh, I think when you say Montebello, I think is the next one on that. Um, we just added that third team. So I'm not hundred percent on who was added, but uh then we, we actually finished the year. Uh, so every year we had always, dating back to Coach Doherty, we have always done, had scheduled a doubleheader on the Tuesday before districts, uh, typically against Cedar Springs. Um, we have almost never played that game because we always get that playing game. So I thought it would be better to go play on Saturday. So I found out from Jeff Hart um, of uh, Bay City, John Glenn, that he hosts a Memorial Day tournament over in uh, in Bay City there. So we're going to go play John Glenn, who just graduated two of, I think, the best players in the state of Michigan, who are both at Oakland now. But he does a fantastic job of developing kids. So they're going to be tough. And then I believe Canton is the other team in that. That's a big school. So some good experience heading right into that district. Um, you know, and we might get whooped. We might compete. I don't know. Uh, but it's going to be good for our boys either way. So I just tried to look for the biggest, baddest teams we could play uh, outside of our conference on these these uh, weekends and stuff like that. As the season goes on, you got to be battle tested, right? You, there's no replacement for seeing a good arm live. No matter what Coach Yonker and I are physically capable of, we are not capable of that, right? We we just can't replicate it, and no machine can. Nothing. The competition live against good pitching, so. I'm just looking for opposing arms and can we get them on the schedule? Sounds good, man. Well, I think yeah, that's as, it for our questions. Yeah. As you can tell, I could talk about this all day. I was gonna say, yeah, we <laughs> can just let it loose and you can just talk about whatever you want for like the next 20 minutes if you really wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> dude, I got, I got 10 hours. I could sit here and talk to you about what we've been doing and how we, how we look at the schedule and the development and all that. Like, I just, I love it. Right. So every day, you know, full-time job. And then as soon as that job's over, I have another full-time job with my daughter, but uh, I got to mix in there my my love for the game of baseball and helping these kids get better every day. Yeah. How is that though? Like just balancing that now, especially with baseball season picking up and with your newborn child. I mean, that's got to be a tough situation. How do you handle that? Yeah. Well, we try to keep, we, you know, early on, we have to get a lot done. So some of our practices, I want 90 minute practices, but some of them do trend towards the two hour mark because we just have to get more done. Right. We, it turns out we need more PFP reps. We need more first third work or whatever. Um, but I just try to keep it short, concise, get to the point. Right. That's why that up tempo is so important. Get the work done, get out of there. Then the kids can go home. They can, do homework or play Xbox, whatever they do, um, you know, and then, uh, and then they're done, but they're, they're tired, right? They've, they've had a lift, they've ran, they've played baseball. 
So they go home and hopefully they just eat and go to sleep. But I know most of them probably don't. Um, but that's the idea is just be short and concise with it so that I can get home to my daughter, right? That's my goal. I want to get home to her. Uh, so that's, that's my motivation to get through it, but, uh, it never turns off, right? Even during the work day, getting stuff done around my office. And then, uh, I got a little bit of a break. All right. Let's, let's look through some, uh, let's look through the pitching charts from last game and see if I can see any, any things we got to work on, right? Let's look through the box score and see, um, if there's anything I'd missed before, you know, how can I tinker with the lineup or what should we do in practice today? Right. So I, I'm, I'm always doing it. I'm dreaming it. I'm, you know, I think about when I fall asleep, when I wake up, like baseball is just in my, my DNA. So, um, I just have to kind of weave it in. There's not really a good answer to that, Joe. I just have to kind of weave it into everything. You just figure it out. Yeah, that's right. You just figure it out. Yeah. 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 You got to do what you got to do, but uh, especially as a baseball fan, you're from Michigan, but White Sox fan. Oh boy! How, what are your mean, thoughts on that so far this year? You need to fire the the manager immediately. <laughs> like last night, they were up. I think well, it was five five when I saw it. Then they went up six five in extras, and then he brought in this like forty two year old Shaw pitcher who just got rocked and lost the game. I mean, the whole <laughs> game was absolutely on the manager of the team. Uh, I mean, that, that organization is a dumpster fire. It all starts with the owner. You know, if you have a good owner who wants to win and they're willing to invest the money in it, then these teams usually compete. But the White Sox have not had that my entire life. Uh, they lucked into it in 2005. And then they've half-heartedly pretended to be competitors ever since. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I have to admit the Tigers are way, they're a younger, more exciting team to watch. Uh, I, to this day, think that the reason the White Sox couldn't do anything with their uh, little window of opportunity, as their old GM always used to talk about, is because he hired a mummy instead of hiring A.J. Hinch. He should have hired A.J. Hinch back in the day. But instead, the White Sox didn't. The Tigers did. He's a great manager. Tigers are, dude, they're good. They're fun to watch, too. I mean, Riley Green, some of these guys, like, they're they're good players. They're fun to watch. So, unfortunately, yes, I'm a White Sox fan. Uh, but I find myself watching more and more Tiger baseball. Well, maybe you'll make the switch sometime soon. Who knows what's going to happen? I don't know. You have to get a new decal for your truck on the back because uh, <laughs> it might be a little rough one. But I, yeah, that's, I don't really have any more questions. So, Brady, do you got any more questions? <laughs> oh, I'll ask one question. I think just for the viewers at home that are following along with the CSAA outlook this year, obviously you guys are at the top, but what do you see from all those other teams, especially in your route to try to go through them and really reclaim your crown? Yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be – we have a lot of guys returning uh, to a couple of the teams, you know, guys like Hammond or uh, Sadoff and Gear and some of those guys out at Chip Hills, Josiah out at Nuego, you know. Um, and then there's some teams that are kind of full of unknowns. I know Grant, he pulled up a lot of younger guys this year. Uh, Central Montcalm lost a lot, but they still got a couple arms. Um, so it'll it'll be competitive without a doubt. Um, what ends up happening a lot of times is that there's, there's really like one dominant player, right? So like our conference, there's one dominant player on, on almost every team. We saw that last year with, uh, you know, Larson at Kent city. Not, I'm not saying the other players aren't good, but I'm just saying they have one very exceptional player. So like Morley Stanwood has that this year, Devin Garbo is just a gamer. I mean, the kid just plays, I cannot get him to commit to play for post 98. Uh... He doesn't want to play summer ball. But the kid is a gamer. I mean, he's he's a good ball player, right? Uh, but uh, we see a lot of that. Last year, White Cloud, Mason Ruther was a really good player for him. Uh, he graduated. So there's some unknowns with some of those guys. I know Garbo is going to show up and play. Uh, I don't know about White Cloud. I don't know about Lakeview. You know, I don't know about Kent City. Um, so there, there's a lot of unknown with it. Uh, so what we try to just focus on is, hey, we – we take care of our own business, check our own boxes, and the rest should take care of itself, right? You follow the process and the rest takes care of itself. So, I, I mean, I expect these guys every single day to go out there and throw up 10 plus runs, no matter who we face. Um, you know, I'm, I specialize in the offensive part of the game, the approach and all that. So that's my expectation. Coach Yonker 
his expectation is that they go out there and they K up 10 plus guys a game. Right. So we talk about it every day. It's just what we expect. There's no rolling in and, oh, we're looking past these guys or, oh, man, I can't look at look at this guy. He looks like a monster, all that. We saw that's part of this uh, this, you know, kind of set of expectations that we we enhanced, I would say, for this year over last year, because there was an intimidation factor when, uh, you know, the six three Lucas Mead or however tall he is filled up that box to lead off the game against us with Gladwin, right? When Lincoln McKinnon stepped up, I'm pretty sure he's an offensive lineman or defensive lineman up at Northern now. The kid is a big kid, right? I mean, when he steps into the box, you're kind of like, woo, right? We can't have that. You can't have that, right? In baseball, you you may as well just go back to the dugout if, if you're thinking that on the on-deck circle. You have to go up there thinking to yourself, this is, I don't care. I'm, I'm going to ruin this guy's day. Right. I want to hit the ball so hard that this guy rethinks why he's even playing the game. You know, I want to embarrass this hitter so badly as a pitcher that I he's got to rethink his his priorities here. Right. Like that's our goal every day. All these guys, that's what we expect out of them. We're not intimidated by anyone. We go out and we just play the game and we play it right, play it hard. And the scoreboard will take care of itself if that happens. Big time, dog. Not not really an answer, specific answer, but a little bit of an answer. Oh, yeah, we got you. Well, we appreciate it nonetheless. Uh, this Zoom meeting is also running out of time pretty soon, so I think we'll call it here. But, JT, thanks for coming on. Uh, glad to have you back. I mean, you were here for the start of the rundown, but then, you know, you ditched us. So, I mean, we're not going to hold any bad feelings. I'll be back like for that. football, man. I'll be back for football. I'll be able to jump back prime, on. Yeah, you want me back for prime time. All right, you want me <laughs> back for prime time. That's okay. Fair weather. Fair weather. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fair weather, fair weather rundown fan. Yeah. You are, but it's all good. We appreciate you for watching. Thanks, JT, for coming on. Good luck this season. That's it for the rundown. Thanks for watching. All right. Thanks. Peace.